welcome back. Last week, our journey took us to the village of Cheddar, where I gorged myself on all things cheesy. This week, we crossed the seas to La Rioja, northern Spain's magnificent wine region in the Ebro Valley. La Rioja, the hunter valley of Spain, but with squirrels, really, really cute red ones, and a unique microclimate sandwiched between two towering mountain ranges. They've been making wine here since at least the year 873, so they've become pretty bloody good at it. Helpfully, they even kept France drunk throughout the great French wine blight of the mid-19th century, going on to produce more red wine than anywhere else in Spain. So much, in fact, that each year they host a red wine fight in the township of Haro. Here's a quick rundown of the classifications of Riochan wines. A wine simply labelled Rioja is your basic young table wine that's been aged in oak barrels for a few months. A Crianza should mature in them for at least a year, followed by a few months in the bottle. A Reserva is made from the best harvests and aged in oak for a minimum of three years, while a Gran Reserva is produced with the most exceptional grapes from the best growing seasons and aged for at least five years. Needless to say, these beauties are the pride of the region. The native Tempranillo grape is the hero of Rioja, featuring in the vast majority of blends. I went to visit Campo Viejo, one of the major players in La Rioja, to find out more. I'm here at Campo Viejo in the heart of Rioja. Their wines are some of the most popular and widely available from this region. Now, directly below where I'm standing is one of the largest wine production operations in Europe. We got a peek behind the scenes at just how epic it all is. Our tour guide told us that each one of these giant tin cans holds an average of eight hectares worth of grapes. Or at least I think that's what he said, because the whole tour was in Spanish. Just like the Hunter Valley, 58-year-old Campo Viejo is Australian-owned, producing a whopping 30 million bottles of wine each year, which is just about enough to keep every person in Australia happy for the afternoon. Now, Rioja is famous for its reds, but my favourite of the day was this Rosado which is similar to a rosé you might find from any other region. The great thing about rosé, or rosado, is that it's really great to drink on a stinking hot day like today. Now I have two rules when it comes to pink drink. Number one, highest alcohol content you can find. Now this sounds like something that an alcoholic might say, but the point is you don't want something that's sickly sweet, and quite often you can tell by the colour. So looking at the colour, you don't want it to be bright, deep pink, like pink cordial. You want something with a bit of a peachy blush to it like this. The other way, of course, is the alcohol content. Uh, anything over around 11 or 12% will usually give you a nice dry finish. Secondly, it should be served as cold as possible. Uh, there's, there's one really good hot tip for how to make it really cold really quickly, and that's to wrap the bottle in paper towel and then wet it and then chuck it in the freezer. Now don't do it the other way around uh, by wetting the paper first, otherwise you end up with uh, a handful of paper mache. So that's it for Rioja this week. Please join us again next week when we head to Padron and try out what's known in some circles as the Russian roulette pepper, which may or may not be lethally deadly. In the meantime, please head over to the Jason's Tasty Places Instagram page and join up there for assorted food porn. I'm going to finish off this bottle in about 15 minutes or so. And I'll see you next time. And just remember, there's nothing quite as satisfying as eating local produce. Cheers.